Welcome to another look inside video. And as you can see here, I've got an OS Max or an OS engine box that dates back to, oh, probably the late 70s, early 80s. And this is a recent acquisition that I just got from eBay. Now, this was one of those things where it was at a reasonable price and it was a auction or a bid or a auction or a make offer. Well, I made a lower offer than the initial bid price and the seller just completely ignored it, didn't respond. So I sat there for a couple of days. The initial auction uh, passed. Nobody made any bids on it. It didn't sell. He immediately relisted it. So then I made another offer within about 48 hours of the end of the second auction, an offer of the lowest maximum, and waited for a few hours and nothing happened. And then it got down to, you know, the last four hours of the auction and I sent the guy an email or a message saying hey you've got this ad set up as a make offer an auction obviously nobody's bidding on it and you're not responding to my offer so what gives you know why did you make the ad like that well about 10-15 minutes later I get an email saying you won or you know your offer was accepted so I guess I coerced him into selling it I don't know but anyway this is an OS 50 FSR engine now I have had one of these before um, several years ago, I think it was in 2019, that a friend, Reese, had given to me. Now when he gave me that engine, he gave me the engine and the muffler, but it didn't come with a box. Now at least this time I've got a box, but that's it. I don't have the instructions that come with it. So the OS 50 FSR airplane version, and this is how it came in the box, it was this nice little cloth piece. Um, there's a glow plug in here, but I put that glow plug in there because I intend to use it. Let me see about zooming in just a bit closer here. So the 50 FSR, this was not originally designed to be an airplane engine. The 50 FSR from the review I found on this, it was the 50 FSR H version, helicopter version. And I'll put a link to that review in the description. But this engine began life in 1978, I believe, or 1979, 80. I'll have to look on my OS engine's timeline again. As a helicopter engine, this was a specifically designed helicopter engine that they just two years later made an aircraft variant for. The helicopter engine had a nice big square head. It didn't come with an exhaust, uh, but they did offer exhaust for the helicopters at the time. So this is not designed to be, it was not originally conceived and designed to be an airplane engine. It was designed to be a helicopter engine, which is why it's an FSR, but it doesn't have that ancient or that original FSR styling, whereas you have that front detachable front housing. I guess for whatever reason they decided that this for a helicopter, and I don't know anything about helicopters, needed to be a little bit more robust. And that probably is what led them eventually to get rid of the FSR front housing, a detachable front housing style, and go to the SF series of engines, which were all single crankcase or single piece crankcase. But this engine looked like it was very low time. I'm going to see if I can. It is not an ABC engine, it is a ringed engine. It is a Dykes ringed engine. Now, um, the one that Reese had given me, he had just replaced the ring in it and the bearings so it was in different condition this is a used engine it doesn't smell it smells like they were whoever had run it last had put some after run oil in it um, but i can tell that as a used engine i'm going to do some disassembly but first i want to show you this is how it came it came with a 744 exhaust uh, whether this exhaust has been used with this engine or if the seller just found an exhaust, I don't know. The exhaust definitely has the smell of oil residue, fuel residue in there. And then of course it came with this, you know, motor mount, which who cares? I don't really give a crap about the engine mount. But I do have some tools here and I am going to do a look inside of this engine just so we can see what the top of the piston looks like and open up the crankcase. And if I'm lucky enough, if it's in good enough shape, I don't have my heat gun with me here, but I do have uh, a bamboo rod that should fit in there. I'm going to see if, uh, if it's in good enough condition so that the sleeve will come out so I can at least pop the piston out. I'm not so sure that's going to happen, but we'll see. 
<coughs> so, as I said, this was a specifically designed, originally conceived and designed to be a helicopter engine. Which means, I'm not sure really what that means. I don't know enough about helicopters to know whether they, you know, I know they have gear reductions to, to bring the blade speed down. Um, but I don't know if that typically means you have a really high revving engine or not. All I know is when I ran this thing the last time, not this engine, but the last 50 FSR that I had, I used a 12.6 prop on it. And it ran well with that. Um, I don't recall if it exceeded. I don't recall off the top of my head what the uh, peak RPM was on it. But this time, if this is designed to peak out a little bit more, I'm going to put a smaller prop on it when I run it. And hopefully I'll get it run this year. Because it is fall and getting cold now. So here's our reveal of the inside. Let me bring this piston up to the top. So you can see it is used. I've got a piece of paper towel here. So it's not a new engine. Let me just see if this will... I got a little bit of stuff off of there. Let's see about doing the top of the piston here real quick. Not a whole lot. So it does have some runtime on it, but it's in good condition. Um, let's pop this rear cover off. This will be interesting to see if if there's a gasket on here. To me, it kind of looks like there might be, but some of these older engines, they didn't have gaskets on them because the machining was so good. But anyway, I was talking about the prop. So I think this time, I don't have a ton of different size props, but I'm sure I have an 11.7 and 11.6. Now an 11.7, from what I recall, and when you do different props, an 11.7 should be roughly equivalent to a 12.6, which is what I ran the last time I had one of these engines. This time, I think I'm going to run it with the 11.6 and rev it up even more. Okay, so this does have a gasket which I hope I didn't damage. And there's the inside of this engine. Here's the rear cover. Looks pretty typical. This looks to be in pretty fantastic shape. Yeah, it's been run. Try and get the lighting here such that you can get a better view. This is a pretty nice. Now let's see if I'm lucky enough you get this oh look at that sleeve popped right up so let me make sure there's no orientation here I don't see a pin it's not pinned so I'm gonna have to make sure I take this out and remember how it comes out there's our sleeve these are the exhaust ports here intake port okay so I'm just gonna set that like that now I'm hoping to be able to just drop this Hoping to be able to see if this, get this off of here, but it doesn't look like it's wanting to just easily come off here. And I don't, we have a heat gun to facilitate this. Why wouldn't it want to just drop right off? Maybe if I do this. I mean, it feels like, it feels like there should be enough movement in the connecting rod this way and that way to allow this thing to just come off because it's coming very close to dropping off there. I wonder if there's just enough of a catch at the bottom so that it's not wanting to do that. It's very, very close. Let's move it up here towards the top and see. There we go. Oh, my gasket did break. Crap. That's not cool. Let's see if I can get the rest of this off. I'll just put it back. I'll use the same gasket. Uh, I'm just going to be very careful with this. So here's how this came out. It came out like this. So this was to the rear. So let's look at this side. Yeah, this side's chamfered. So that'll be easy to tell. So here's our piston. This is the rear side of the engine. And it's got your typical retaining clips. And it's cut out here. 
and the ring. You can see, hopefully you can see the Dykes ring here it sits right on the top and it rotates freely. Got a nice gap. Just typical OS quality here. See, this is what I was talking about. I thought they had, you can maybe see how it's not relieved so that this connecting rod can go this way and that way. They've got uh, some pretty substantial beefy areas there that preclude that from happening so it looks like I just needed to have this down at bottom dead center to pull that piston out. Let's see if this gives us a better look at the crank. Those bearings look really, they look nice, they feel nice. Can I get a different angle here with the light? Well, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get you any really good angles here with lighting so you can see those bearings maybe if I do this. I'm looking at a screen and trying to angle this at the same time and I'm not being too successful. But anyway, this thing is silky smooth. It has some runtime on it, obviously. Oh, and there's a arrow denoting the orientation also of the exhaust. That arrow, really can't see it here. I'm not sure I can, there you can kind of see it there maybe. The arrow denotes the orientation of the exhaust in this instance because it is going in line with this hole. So that means that the chamfered, so the arrow is facing, right now it's facing towards me, which also means that the chamfered side of the bushing here on the connecting rod is this way, which means it goes in the engine just like this. So let's very quickly see if I can't Drop this thing back in here. And there we go. And now we'll see about sliding this piston back on here. And do that. I'm going to do this so that this video doesn't go any longer than it is. So anyway, I'm hoping to get this thing out and running this fall or winter sometime. It depends on a lot of things. It depends on the weather. It depends on timing of when I have time to do it. The days are shorter, so it means it has to be done earlier in the afternoon. So there's a lot of factors involved here, but suffice it to say, I'm super excited to get this engine out and run it. And we will do that as quickly as possible. So with that said, I'm going to conclude this inside look or look inside of this OS50 FSR engine.